What's up guys, it's Chris, and today I'm gonna share with you one of my favorite throwback recipes, pizza protein in a bowl. So if you're looking to enjoy some za without the guilt, keep watching. show you the ingredients that I'm using. This is a little bit more of an intense recipe than I normally do, so I am making a double batch. I'm going to use two pounds of ground meat. This is the protein, and I'm actually using ground beef and ground turkey. You can use two pounds of either or, or you can mix it like I am. This is what I have in our fridge, so I'm mixing it out of default. But one tip I like to do when I break up big bulk ground meats and I freeze them or any meats all right on the Ziploc um, the percentage so this is 93 percent and then I'll write the total calories and the macro split just so later when it's who knows how much longer down the road I pull it out I'll know exactly what it is so if you are tracking or trying to count stuff you don't have to guess it's right there so that's my tip on the meat next we're gonna use some dried pepperoni, and this is turkey pepperoni, so it's a much healthier alternative to traditional pepperoni. And I recently fell in love with these bags because they don't require refrigeration. So you can just put a few of these in your cupboard and you don't have to worry about the space that it takes up. Um, so these are great to throw in a backpack when you're hiking. We took these into Moab Arches National Park and they hit the spot. So the turkey is really good because it's a little bit less greasy, especially if you're taking it out in a backpack for the day. It's just a little bit more appetizing. And of course it's healthier in recipes. Now I do like to also get some regular pepperoni and salami for fun, like last minute happy hours or get together where people are getting together. You can just throw together an easy and quick charcuterie board. So these are really good for that mushrooms nothing crazy here these are just sliced cremini you could also use baby bella's olives i'm using kalamata because that's what i always carry with me you could use green olives regular black olives whatever you prefer onion and pepper i am going to show you how i chop my onions and my peppers usually i don't show this because i like to give you guys the baby and save you the labor pains and nobody likes to sit and watch me chop but I have a really, really great viewer. Her name is Noelle, and she keeps asking for some chopping tips. And actually, when I watch my friends chop onions, it's like a disgrace because I find nobody really does it the way that I do it, which is the best way, <laughs> of course. So I'm gonna just show you easy ways to chop these things. Garlic, and then my spices. I'm using crushed red pepper, basil leaves, oregano leaves, fennel seed, salt, and pepper. I'm also using tomato paste. I'm using the tomato paste. You could also just open a can of pizza sauce, just jarred pizza sauce, or you could use um, canned tomato sauce. But what I find when I read the back of pizza sauce, it's basically just this with water and spices. So I like to have this on board because it takes up a lot less space than a can of pizza sauce and it's multifunctional. I can use this in a lot of different ways and just add the spices, dilute it down with water and it's a lot cleaner of an ingredient list as well. This is literally just organic tomatoes and salt versus when you read the chemicals in jars, it just makes you feel a little bit better for this. So that's it. So we're gonna get chopping. I'm gonna show you really quickly the onion and the peppers and then we're gonna start cooking. So the goal of this is we're gonna chop it into cheeks and we wanna leave the top and the bottom intact. So just take your knife and just work down. And see what we did there is we left this rib here while keeping a minimal rib on this. If needed, you can just cut that off a little more. But continue all the way around the pepper. And I usually get three four, sometimes five cheeks, it depends on the shape. Then you're left with this guy. And at this point you could get even better, chop the bottom off to use that. And 
chop the tops off to really get every little bit of pepper off of there. And then you throw away the waste. Now when I do this as part of my meal prep, I'll save them as the cheeks and store them this way because you can eat them as a nice cold crunchy snack or if you're going to cook with them, you have the full cheeks so that you can slice them into strips or chop them into cubes. So they're very versatile when they're at this point still. Now we're going to chop the onion, which first you want to identify the root tip and then the non-root tip. That's critical first step to chopping. Non-root tip. Cut that off. Then flip it, find the root, and cut it directly down the center. Now you have two halves. Remove the outer layer of paper from each half. And get all of the little um, paper flies out of the way and all of the little root hairs that might fall and just clean off your cutting board so it's nice and safe to work on. Then flip your onion over so it's nice and stable. Take your knife and run it horizontally almost to the root a couple of times. Be careful where your fingers are. So I took the blade till about right here. Then you want to take it and do vertical cuts. The smaller and closer together your cut lines are, the finer your chop will be. So if you want a rough chop, just do big spaces. If you want a nice fine dice, go nice and close. Then it's ready to start slicing. and you have this little root at the end that you throw away. If you didn't get it fine enough, just go through again and chop it up more. And when I'm pre-prepping onions, I'll take them to this stage and I'll put them in my fridge like this. That way I don't have the stinky paper in my trash. Um, sometimes I'll take it this far in my fridge, but you're gonna have a stronger onion smell when you store it when it's chopped more. So I hope those chopping tips helped. Let me know if they did. And now that our chopping is out of the way, let's get to the fun part of actually cooking. So I am using my 11 inch skillet. If I had a larger one, I would use it. I can tell you right now, I'm gonna be pushing the limits on this pan because of the amount of food that's going into it. But we are going to be doing this in batches. Um, I do a lot of batch cooking in my single skillet meals. So first we're going to start with the mushrooms. We're going to get the mushrooms in while the pan is clean because um, they just cook up better. I like to get a nice sear on my mushrooms. And honestly, if you wanted a really good sear, you do them in single layers. But that's not the type of mushroom I'm cooking right now. So just get them in. And the thing to keep in mind with batch cooking is... You are going to pull this out, so have a plate nearby, and eventually as we work through the ingredients, you'll put them back in together once we get to that point. So you got to pull them off initially while they're just under the way that you want them. So undercook everything slightly because it's going to cook together a little bit more and you don't want soggy vegetables. So we'll just carry these mushrooms. I am going to put some salt on the mushrooms midway and then the next ingredients will be my onions. So these mushrooms are, you can see they're releasing some water. The salt really helps draw out the water so that you don't need as much oil. And we're going to pull these off. I like to keep my mushrooms with some bite to it. So pull them off, transfer them to a plate. And next, I know I said we were gonna do onions, but I lied. We're gonna do our pepperonis next. So all we need to do is just throw the pepperonis right into the pan. 
And we're gonna let those get nice and charred and cook down a little bit. And then we're gonna pull those out onto the same plate with the mushrooms. The pepperoni is starting to kind of char up a little bit. So I'm gonna pull it off because you don't want that to burn. And then next we're gonna do the onions. Next, onions straight into the pan. I'm gonna skip the oil here because my pan is really nice nonstick. It's a scan pan. I don't need it. If you need it, add just a touch and measure it. But we're gonna let the onions go. We're also gonna add some salt to the onions. The salt just helps season every layer as you cook. And again, the salt will help draw out some water from the onions and it will help give it a little saute. And I just want to interrupt this cooking um, to show you guys where Aaron and I are staying right now. We're currently boondocking in Wall, South Dakota, which is the Badlands area. And it is out of this world, guys. We come from Minneapolis. We lived so close to this area and we've never even been here to explore its beauty. And it's my favorite boondocking spot so far. You know, we've been traveling from Arizona to Minneapolis sharing our boondocking along the way with our new Battleborn battery system and this is awesome. We're gonna be here for probably a week and a half before we go home. So check it out. We have amazing sunsets here. The cows are amazing. The views are breathtaking and we just couldn't be happier with this location. I'm gonna leave the onions in the pan. Those are nice and golden. They've softened up a bit. I am gonna add a touch bit more oil and then I'm gonna put the garlic in. And the garlic, you can do garlic in a few different ways. The best way is fresh garlic minced up. The second is the jarred. So this is a shortcut. And then the third and the laziest is the powder. Any three are just fine. If you have the energy and the access use fresh when you can it will elevate your dish but if you're gonna buy this and it's just gonna sit around in your corner and grow green stems then save the money and buy the version that you know that you will use so that's my tip on garlic i like to use a mix of the three depending on my mood that day so the garlic was in the pan for just a minute you'll smell it and i'm gonna go straight in with my ground meat i'm gonna put the beef in leaving the onions and the garlic in and the turkey. Since my turkey was frozen, there's some liquid in there. So just pour that aside if you can. And then I'm just gonna mix all this together and incorporate the meat mixture with the onions and get the meat cooked through. Our meat is cooked and I'm gonna keep that in there. Our pan is starting to get really concerningly full <laughs> and I knew that this would happen, but I wanted to use my scan pan for a few reasons. One, I know a lot of people that are traveling on the road don't have a lot to work with and most of our meals are done in this skillet. So I wanna showcase how you can make what you have work. That's one. Number two, I really wanted to use the nonstick on this pan so that I could use less oil. I do have my Lee Creuset, which is a larger quart size Dutch oven, but it's uh, I like the nonstick, so I wanted to, sh to use that. And then also number three, I think it's a little harder for the viewers to actually see what I'm doing in that big pot. So this, you can see a little bit more on what's going on. Um, next, we're gonna go into the tomato paste. I wanna show you another trick that I use instead of Dirty, dirtying up a tablespoon. I just use my scale a lot. So 60 grams is what I'm looking for. And I already have this plate dirty. 
So I'm just going to measure out my tomato paste straight onto here and then I have one less spoon to wash. Plus this is about four tablespoons that I'm using so you can imagine doing a spoon and then getting it out. Sometimes it's hard to get the paste out of the spoon so this is just a lot easier and that's going to go straight in. Try to create a little bit of a well in the middle so that your tomato paste can get a little bit of a contact with the pan. It's not going to be perfect, um, but just to give it some direct heat. Also at this point, I'm going to take all of my spices. This is a lot of spices, but there's a lot of ingredients in here that we need to season. And remember, the trick to eating healthy food is making it taste good through your spices and your herbs and your seasonings. So I'm going to put this in. I'm going to really mix it up good. You really want to incorporate the spices and also you want to make sure if you are blending meats like the turkey and the beef that it's really well combined. If you want to just use the turkey, just use turkey. Um, so we'll get this mixed up and get the seasonings activated. Next up, we're going to throw in our green peppers. The green peppers are raw still. So those are going to go in, those are going to cook directly in the meat mixture. I like to do the meat towards the end because once I get the meat in there and the seasonings in there, I am pretty much done with my batching. So the peppers are going to take just a couple minutes and then I'm going to end up adding everything back in. So one minute on the peppers and then everything else goes in. All right, so we are ready to put it all together. Look at how easy it's gonna be. We're gonna do the mushrooms, the pepperoni, and my olives, which I have sliced vertically down the middle. That way they visually look rustic, but you still scatter them out throughout the dish. And it's that simple, guys. Look at how it just comes together at the end in one dish. This looks incredible. I mentioned this was a favorite throwback of mine and I used to make this at our house and our apartment all the time for my work lunches. This was one of my go-to prep items. Um, now you might notice, I call this a pizza, but there's no pizza dough, there's no cheese. Obviously it's not a pizza, but what it is, it's all the flavors of a pizza. You have the pepperoni, the um, olives, peppers, onions, it tastes like sausage too because of that little bit of fennel in there. Like this smells like a pizza party in here. Now for serving this, you have a lot of options. I like to eat it just the way it is because you do get carbs in there from the vegetables. Um, if you are looking for more of a well-balanced meal with more carbs, which I do encourage, um, you can have different options. Quinoa would go really good as a bed and then put this on top of your quinoa or you could do a nice little pita pizza, either in a sandwich or grill up the pita um, and serve it with that. You could obviously sprinkle some cheese on, you know, have it however you want it. If you want it cheesy on some bread, then do that and make it more like a pizza. It'd also be really good on some little rice cakes, make some rice cakes pizza. So the options are there and this is a great way for you to transform it from day to day so that you don't get sick of it. If you do get bored easily, change the way you serve it up. Also, you can change how you serve it to different members in your family. So if you guys have different eating styles, you can eat the same thing, but serve it differently to accommodate all of your likings. So I hope you enjoyed this recipe. I know it's been a while since I've done recipes. You know, we took a little bit of a break on the recipes because our lifestyle, RV lifestyle, videos just get so much better views. So we eased off the recipes, but if you like seeing these, let me know and I'll add more in. I definitely love doing the recipes for my clients. Um, it gives them something to look forward to and some new things to try out that is coach approved. So um, just write a comment if you have something you'd like to see. Otherwise, check out the blog for the full recipe to make this exactly how I made it here at IreneIronFitness.com. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you next time. Bye.